thank God for such a time like this. Even though with a deep sense of loss, we're here to honor the life of a wonderful man. Amen. Let's share, share a quick prayer. Father, we thank you for tonight. We give you all the glory. We ask that your spirit take control of tonight. For everything that we do tonight, we ask that you take all the glory, you take all the honor, you take all the adoration. In Jesus' name I pray.
our strength. He's our strength. At times when we are faint, we feel so faint, we feel so downcast. And sometimes we don't know what's really going on in our lives. But He's there. He said He would never leave us, nor forsake us. Hallelujah. slumped down we thank you for a time like this oh God we give you praise we give you order we give you adoration yes it would be absurd to man oh God to be praising at a time when we are gathered for such a moment but Lord you are our strength we will lift up our eyes to the hills from whence comes our help 
Our help comes from none other but from you and you alone. Father, we commit this program to you this evening. As we open up, oh God, in this program, we ask every single item that will be done today, we ask that you will take absolute control. Let it be done to your praise and to your glory. We admit our humanity before you. You created us. Yes, we have emotions. God, you understand. You are the God of all flesh. You are the monarch of the spirits. Father, we thank you indeed. We ask that you will have your way in this place today. Take the glory. When we as humans, oh God, today, as we celebrate the life of our brother, your son whom you have called home, as we share memories, oh God, of our interactions with him, yes, our emotions will fray up. But we thank you because you gave us those emotions. We thank you, oh God, because you are our comfort. You are our balm, the balm in Gilead. But I ask, oh God, for the family members, both those who are here today and those who are watching by way of the internet, God, that with everyone, you will sit close and wrap your hands around. Thank you, because we know that as we open now, oh God, your name and your name alone will be glorified. That by the time we live here today, we will have perfect memories, oh God, that we have shared with your son, our brother, and with one another. Because your hands, your hands have been wrapped around us, we will live here with joy. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In the sense we say. Amen. Hallelujah. Shall we all rise to our feet as we take the first hymn? Blessed assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine, pair of salvation, purchase of
submission. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I am my Savior. I'm happy and blessed. Watching and waiting. Bible reading will be taken by Chidima Irabo and Emeka Irabo. Let's help them. Let us clap for them as they come. Let's encourage them. Good evening, church. I will take you my Bible reading from John 14, verse 1 to 7. I'll, I'm reading from the NIV version. It says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I not have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, and I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes, comes, to, comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do, you do know him and have seen him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you put your hands together for them for that Bible reading? Hallelujah. It's um, with a deep sense of loss and with pain in our heart that we're gathered here tonight to honor the memory of a beloved brother, father, uncle, dear friend, and of course, a dear brother. The only joy that we have and the consolation we have is that he was a beacon of light in the Christian community. Amen? And that is all the joy that we have in our hearts that is in a better place than we know today. Having said that, we're going to be having tributes from the daughter and one of the big cousins tonight. Can we put our hands together as we welcome the daughter Osama Irabo? Hello, everyone. Good evening. It's uh, thank you all so much for coming. <laughs> well, I'm just here to uh, give some words 
you know, about my dad. And um, I hope that as I speak, you all will get to know a little bit more about him. Um, you know, as shocking as the death of my father was, I have confident peace and assurance that he rests eternally in our Heavenly Father because I don't, he loved Jesus more than anything else. It, that was his passion, that was his heart. And um, my dad was a dear brother, a loyal friend, a treasured pastor, and a loved husband. As my father, he was my refuge and my strength and a very great source of comfort and rest. Um, if you ask a lot of people that know him, he just had a very gentle spirit. He was very calm, very, very calm. I don't know if in my household we were more women than men, so he had no choice but to be calm, but um, <laughs> he was just very soothing for my family and I. And um, going, going through this process, the scripture of Psalm 23 has been a great source of peace to me. When it says that, you know, God leads you beside still waters, my dad was the physical representation of still waters for me. He was someone that if I, if my whole world was shaking and if I just come to be with him, he would literally give me peace. He just had a gentle soul. He had a gentle just disposition and he had just the most wonderful smile and he'll just say, everything is going to be all right. And he would always just tell me that it is well. And um, he has always led my family and I with righteousness along the right path. And I literally have in all my life, because of him, I've never strayed from the house of God. Um, I've been in church for as long as I can remember. The church was <laughs> practically my second home. <laughs> You know, outside of our family house, I believe the church was my father's place, favorite place to be. From the physical location to the literal representation of the church, the body, and the people, he just sincerely loved to fellowship with his brothers and sisters in Christ and just do life together with him. I know everyone who has encountered him can testify of his kindness, his compassion, his dedication, and his loyalty. He would never abandon anyone in their time of need. He was just someone that he would always be there for you. He believed in the potential and the individual gifts within a person. He believed that everyone was, you know, just made for more. He believed everyone had a calling on this earth. And one of his greatest passion was to bring out the greatest potential of someone and it's something that he loved to do you could never be physically or spiritually or even mentally stagnant around him his greatest belief was that everyone has the capacity to grow and that they can um, and he just loved believing in, in impacting people one life at a time he really loved to serve in church once again that was his favorite place to be i remember back when i was little he would pack the whole family my mom us the kids we were very young and we would be there before everybody um i was not my fate you know i was not too happy about it back then but looking back i'm very grateful that he has always provided that safe space for us outside of our home um, my dad's commitment and passion for Jesus was such a great inspiration to me. He really inspired me to know God for myself. I used to wonder, well, you know, what, what's so great about this God? Like, why are you always so, so zealous for him? And he would take his time and just teach me and understand why it is important that we know Jesus for ourselves. And yeah and you know my dad was just he was always present in my life you know there's no absences from my very first steps to the steps that i take today he was there and he was also very affectionate i didn't have that childhood where i would doubt my parents love for me he would always tell me i love you i love your mom i love your siblings it was a constant and if i didn't say i love you back he'd be hello so <laughs> it was a back and forth thing you know and just throughout my life from doing our school runs, events, homework, he was just always present. And um, those closest to him would know that he was an excellent cook. He would throw down in the kitchen, like he made the most wonderful meals. I, he just loved to cook and I'm very happy that I was able to grow up with 
eating his food, eating my mom's food. They would compete at times. My mom would always win, but um, <laughs> he was a wonderful cook. And, um, you know, I, he, he just had a wonderful presence around him. His laugh would just light up the room. His presence was very charismatic and captivating. You know, I take great pride that he was very handsome, gave me my cheekbones. <laughs> and um, I remember when I was in school, <laughs> my friends in secondary school or high school, my female friends, when he would come to pick us up, they would linger around. And I'm like, why are you still here? And they're like, is your daddy coming to get you? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so he, we used to laugh at that. Um, he was very easygoing and a lover of peace. He really cared about his friends, the, his church, um, his family, the, just the community around him, and even the stranger that we would occasionally meet along the way. He would stop by, engage them, ask how their day was, and really just, you know, have a great conversation with them. And, um, you know, as I just end here today, I'll just say one more story that I he found very funny at the time, and every time I bring it up, I get made fun of. Um, ironically, at the time of, um, you know, the, just saying in the church, but at the time of, you know, a very popular worldly singer, Michael Jackson, I did not know about him until the day he died. And my dad said, how do you not know about him? And I looked at him back like, well, how was I supposed to know? We only play gospel music at the home. So I had no idea of how big he was in the music world. So I know there might be some of you here who are just knowing of Pastor Ben for the first time, or maybe you're coming to know of him just by giving your support to us, the family. So I just hope that as you hear my words and the words of everybody else, you'll just come to know how amazing he was, the impact that he had on every single life that encountered him in his community. And so so, dearest daddy, I will miss your embrace and your presence, but I know that you currently rest eternally in the bosom and presence of our Heavenly Father. Your light and legacy lives on in my family, um, the rest of our extended family, within your church, Citadel of Grace, the Launch Network family, and the lives of every single person who has encountered you. So, rest in heavenly peace, and I know we will meet one day again. Thank you for listening. Praise the Lord. Can we put a house together for her? Wow. Amen. It takes special grace and strength for you to stand up here and give a tribute about your dad. That tells you about the grace and the power of God in the Rabbos family. We truly want to bless God for you. Can we one more time salute the grace upon this family? We're yet to hear more about this wonderful man. Um, fortunately, I know him pretty well. We go back more than 20 years as a dear brother and a friend and a colleague. You know, it's hurtful. But I want us to put our hands together for one of the oldest nephew, Bright Irabo. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. One of my earliest memory of Uncle Ben, he was always taking pictures. <laughs> you are very courageous. Stood here and just finished talking. I, I, it's hard because. <clears throat> I grew up with all my uncles and aunties, so in a way, my uncles are like my brother too. And we get excited, and he would be the one to take us a picture, and he'll say, Brian, come say cheese. And I know he meant, come take a picture. I'll get really excited and go call my other cousin, Mary, like, come on, let's go say cheese. And we'll sit, and every little picture you see of me when I was little, he took it. You know, everywhere he, his, his presence was just joyful, just joyful, you know, just 
there's this presence that he carries come and um and everywhere he is too he, he just looks for opportunity to serve he's not just sitting around he just looks for opportunity to serve i remember we're traveling we're coming back from uh, asaba and we, we didn't know what's going on and we're all sitting there we're supposed to check in and you know just just confusion and he goes like why are you why are you just standing he, he came in later why are you always just standing we're like well they said we should wait it's like for what and he just walks in and the next minute we're checking in we're checking in i was like magic man but that was him you know he he, he didn't just stand by he, he always looked for opportunity to serve those around him and and you know in his service it wasn't just to get recognition. He just wanted to get things done. Wanted to relieve some form of pain. You know, um, in August at my uncle's birthday party, we were running late. Things were getting chaotic. We don't know what's going on. And he goes, okay, what needs to happen? I'm like, I got to iron the kids' clothes. And he took the iron out and pressed my kids' clothes. And he just did it perfectly, the way I like to do it, too. And um, I think one of the biggest pain and hurt, I mean, Jesus wept, right? Because someone died. And I'm a big believer, if you're in pain, be in pain and cry and mourn, if you have to mourn and just go through it, there's nothing wrong with it. And... Every time on my birthday, he would send me a very thoughtful prayer. Not just a random prayer, thoughtful. Know that he knows you and he knows where you're at. And he'll tell me he's proud of me. I don't know. There's nobody else that constantly reminds me that they're proud of me. And I've missed it and that's gone. Every time on my birthday, he will write it on Facebook and he will send it to my phone and he will give me a call. He would encourage me, say nice things, specific to me, particular to me. And they say, oh, my boys, I'm going to miss that. I'm not going to get it again. I'm not going to get it again. That's why it hurts a lot. So, as we bid Uncle Ben farewell, we hold on to the memories of his love, his kindness, his unwavering faith, his legacy of devotion to his family, and love for Jesus. I hope it continues to inspire every single one of us to let us know that we're all important to somebody. And um, I hope I'm as good an uncle like he was to me, to my future nephews, by God's grace and nieces. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Can we put our hands together for Bright Sirabo? Amen. He's truly left an imprint in the hearts of so many. He had so many families. You know, if we allow everyone to speak, we probably will not live here today. You know, um, he's a great man. Everything you hear today is so true about who he is. Amen? Also, one of the nieces will be coming to give us a tribute. Can we put our hands together for Mudia? 
the Dahosa West. privilege of loving Pastor Ben Irabor as a father for most of my life, and that is the greatest honor. He raised me as a daughter, answered my call of dad, and showered me, whoo, okay, <laughs> and showered me with the same love he gave his own children. To love another person's child as his own without a second thought shows only a glimpse of the beautiful heart that he had. There was nothing like his love. It was the calm in a storm, peace in the state of chaos. It was unconditional, it was safe and consistent. It left no room for questions, and it was the blessing of my life to experience it, and I'll forever know what true love feels like because of him. He was the epitome of quiet confidence. A man of intentional words who took up space. <laughs> Pastor Ben took up all the space. <laughs> Any room he walked into became attuned to his presence. He was a vision of calm and collected. He held such a charm that drew people to him instantly. It was magnetic the way he could make every person present feel seen, heard, valued. It made you want to work that much harder and be that much better. Just so you could see his face light up with pride. He rarely scolded. <laughs> and when he, he was stern, it was with purpose. What can we learn from this moment? How can we improve? He, he was inherently a teacher. And through his words and actions, he was a true sounding board that was so easy to trust. Pastor Ben had a servant's heart, just like his savior who he chased after fervently. Anyone who walked through his door was treated as royalty. We'd lay out the fancy dishes and silverware, the ones that were designated for special occasions, even for just for an everyday meal. And even if it was the worst thing to clean up, you knew that every person who entered that room would leave feeling full and celebrated. He taught us to serve others well with joy and humility and grace to, per to perform every action with love and his philosophy. If it's not done from the kindness of your heart, then perhaps don't do it at all. <laughs> do anything and all things with intention. I will hold on to this in his many lessons forever. To speak about your person will always be the most beautiful thing. No matter how much it hurts, Dad. I wasn't prepared to live a life without you. And I'll carry your heart in everything I do. And so love the legacy you're leaving behind through Mommy, Osama, Chitaba, and Josh. Daddy, I will miss you so much. Thank you for everything and rest in perfect peace until we see each other again. Hallelujah. Shall we rise to our feet as we take the next hymn? Great is thy faithfulness. He is a faithful God. Oh! 
Hallelujah. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. We thank you. Osama, thank you for that wonderful testimony about Pastor Ben and Bright and Modia. Thank you so much. At this time, I'm going to... Yes, let's clap for them. It's not easy to do this. At this time, I'm going to call on Pastor Ben's only son, Joshua Irabo and I.K. Irabo to come read the second Bible reading. Let's appreciate them as they come. The second reading will be taken from 2 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. Dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know that we will, what happened will, to believers who die, so you will not grieve like people with no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was risen again, we, all, we also believe that Jesus, that Jesus returns. When Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who, die, who have died. We tell you directly for the Lord, for from the Lord, we who still live, when, Jesus, when the Lord returns, will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Then, together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be called up into the clouds and meet with the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. Praise the Lord. Can we please put our hands together for them one more time? You know, they often say that pictures are worth a thousand words. We've heard a lot about this wonderful man of God, but at this time, we'd like you to focus your attention on the screen for a memory lane.
this journey called life. Tomorrow is not promised to any one of us here today. The bread you carry is a privilege. Run your race with God well. Any aorta of bitterness in your heart, let go. You have no capacity to carry bitterness. You are not wired with that. Forgive, let go. Let God become today your vindicator. Let him become your battle ass. You are here today, somebody is here, I don't know what people are contending, what is your right to yours. Go to God in prayer. You will see them come and ask you, come and take. It's not a fight. You are a spiritual being. You don't have to prove right all the time. You don't have to prove that you are smarter all the time. Sometimes you need to take the back seat and let God be God. Hallelujah. What a man. What a legend. Shall we rise to our feet as we sing, It is well with my soul.
seated. You know, at times like this, we ask questions because we're confused and we do not know why God has called him suddenly. But we thank God for the word of God. Amen. It's an honor for me to call up a man of God, a brother to our senior pastor, a friend of the church, who God will use by his grace to make it well with our soul. Can we put our hands together as we welcome Pastor Benny Momo. Please put your hands together. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming tonight to honor uh, our colleague, our friend, and our brother, Pastor Ben. Uh, my last year, we happened to stay in Pastor George's house in Lagos. And while we were there, uh, there was no lady in the house to cook for us. And uh, Pastor Ben took over that responsibility. And all Pastor George and I could do was just act as cheerleaders for Pastor Ben. <laughs> That's all we did. And he was such a, a very, very good cook. I, it was such a privilege to know Pastor Ben. A uh, very gentle man. When Pastor George called me to let me know what happened, I just couldn't believe it. I thought I was dreaming or is this happening? Am I dreaming or what's going on? And uh, but Pastor Ben, uh, you talk about humility, you talk about character and genuine. Uh, we belong to an organization called Launch, and, uh, and Pastor Ben was responsible for championing uh, the Abuja uh, edition. And he was known as a collaborator, one that brought people together. And, um, and we just had the, just the concluded one. And if you remove Pastor Ben out of the equation in Abuja, there's no way we would have the level of impact that we had. We had over 600 pastors and church leaders that gathers. And Pastor Ben galvanizes and gets everybody together. What a life well lived. You know, yes. You know, he lived this life to serve other people, you know, very humble man, very real, sincere, and I was so privileged to have known him uh, for the years that I was able to do that. I just want to share a very few things with you tonight, and I want to honor you, Pastor George and Pastor Gloria. Thank you for the privilege of uh, sharing your pulpit, and our dear friend, Pastor Philip. And it's so good to see you tonight, sir. Thank you, man. So good to see you tonight. Amen. I just want to share scripture with you from the book of Leviticus. Hopefully, you could help me project it. Chapter 23, verse number 40 uh, in the King James Version. Leviticus, chapter 23, verse number 40. And I'm going to read it the moment. Uh, okay, there you go. It says, and you shall take you on the first day the bowels of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. Father, we pray that you bless our time together tonight. I pray that your word will be like a healing balm, that your word will encourage us and build our faith and our trust in you. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. So, in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 40, uh, this was God giving a command to the high priest uh, in the Old Testament that twice, um, once in a year, uh, the high priest should come before the presence of God with two things. One, the palm branch, and number two, the willow uh, branch as well. And that they are to bring the palm branch and the willow branch and that they should 
raise it up in the air and rejoice before the Lord every year. Well, what is so significant about the palm? Well, I'm sure we just had our Palm Sunday uh, very recently, and we saw that the palm tree represents success. Uh, in ancient Greek era, during the Olympic period, when an individual won, uh, the palm tree or the palm leaves were involved. So the palm uh, branch represents victory, a celebration, a happy moment, success, triumph. So this tells us why while Jesus was riding on the donkey to Jerusalem, while they were waving the palm branch, which signifies success, victory, triumph, uh, mountain experience. And that's what it signifies. But then there's the willow branch. And what is the significance of the willow branch? Another word for the willow, I think they'll project, project the picture of the willow. If you look at the willow, it's pointing down. It's actually called the weeping tree. It's called the weeping tree. If you look at the branches, you don't see it sticking up like the palm tree. The palm tree is sticking up, victory, celebration, happy moment, triumphant, victory. Just a, but, but the willow tree is pointing down. And God says, I want the priest to appear before me once in a year, not just with the palm tree, but I want them to show up with the willow branch as well. In other words, what God is saying is that when things are going well, rejoice. And when things are not going so well, he said, I want you to also come before me rejoicing as well. Regardless of what season you are going through, God instructs us. So I want you, whenever you come before me, when things are going well, and when you are having a challenging moment, here is what I want to be consistent with you. Rejoice. Now, it's easy for us to rejoice when things are going well. When you've just gotten a new job, you've just gotten married, and, and things are going well for you, it's easy to rejoice. You know, in Philippians chapter 4, Paul is in prison. And he's writing to people who are free. He say, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say, rejoice. So what God is saying is regardless of what season that you and I find ourselves, what do we do, church? Rejoice. The scripture says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, he says, in everything, give thanks now, we are not thanking God for the situation, but we are thanking God that we are in the situation. I'm not thanking God because I lost my job or because something challenging happened to me, but for the fact that I found myself in the predicament, I'm still going to do what? I'm going to rejoice. It's amazing the way life is. That all of us, there will be palm season. And there will be what? We lose seasons in our lives. It's the reality of life. It happens to everybody. And my faith does not immunize me from the willow seasons of life. Faith doesn't immunize me from life. Faith prepares me to be able to handle the challenges of life. Can I get an amen tonight, church? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, Paul says something. He said, there is nothing you are going through that is not common to the human experience. In other words, there are times when I go through things, I have the tendency to think that I'm the only one going through this. And Satan wants you to think that way as well. He wants to cloud your judgment. He wants to cloud your thinking. He wants you to believe he wants you to have a mistaken conviction that you are the only one going through this. But the scripture tells us in Psalm 34 verse 19, it says, Many are what church, the afflictions of the right. The righteous go through afflictions. There are willow seasons and there are what? Palm seasons in our life. But in whatever season you find yourself, 
the common denominator that God wants from you and I is to maintain the attitude of what? Thanksgiving and rejoicing and thanking God. That's what he wants from all of us. Regardless of what season you find yourself, we are to remain joyful. We are to remain happy. If you look at Jesus when he entered Jerusalem, it was a palm season for him. But in a few days, it will become a willow season. Him going to the cross, being beaten. But then after the willow season on the third day, here comes palm season for Jesus. When we just celebrated that last Sunday. That's the reality of life. That you and I, it doesn't matter what your pedigree is. You and I will go through what? These two seasons in our lives. You are either going through a willow season or you are going through what? A palm season. The good news about the willow season is that as we begin to thank God and remain consistent, your willow season can turn around into a palm season. Come on, say amen. amen. Now, when we go through the willow seasons, we tend to seek after God more. We tend to pray more. We tend to fast more. So, I don't have any problem with the willow seasons because we draw closer to God. We draw even much, much intimate with God in the willow season. We tend to fast more. We pray more. We go hard after God, and that's not God's greatest issue. His greatest issue is the sunny days, the mountain days, the palm days. Because as human beings, we have a tendency to draw away from God when things are going very well in our lives. We tend to pray less. We tend to fast less. The things of God don't mean much to us in the palm days when things are going well. And this is the reason why in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, God warns them they were just about to enter into the promised land. And he kept telling them this statement. He said, beware, be very careful. You're about to enter into your palm season. You're about to enter into your Canaan land. He kept warning them, be very, very careful. Because when you enter the list, you forget who got you where you are. Because in palm days, we have a very short memory. We tend not to want to come to church, or we don't want to pray. We don't want to fast. If you say, let's fast, they say, for what? Every need is already met. We tend to go away from God when things are going well. But God doesn't want that to be the case with us. That even when you're going through your willow days, you're going closer to Jesus Christ. When you are going through sunny days or palm days, you are going closer to Jesus Christ. Regardless of what season you find yourself, that you never allow the success or whatever is happening in your life for you to distance yourself from God. Are you with me tonight, church? That's God's desire for you and I over and over and over again. He kept warning them, remember the Lord thy God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. Deuteronomy chapter 8, 7, 8, 9. If you read all the passages, he just keeps reminding them, be very careful. You are about to enter into the promised land. And I'm afraid that when you enter into the promised land, that you're going to have a distorted memory. You're going to forget who got you where you are. Ah, I pray for you and I that whether we're going through the willow days or the palm days, but we allow whatever season we're in to draw us closer to Jesus Christ. I know this is a willy, willow season right now uh, for the Rabos family. The loss of Pastor Ben is a very painful thing. The memory of it. Every time you think about that, it's a very, very painful. Willow days are painful moments. Don't let nobody deceive you. They are painful moments. And I believe in days to come, in weeks to come, in months to come, you are going to go through this pain. You know, I just uh, uh, lost my wife about, uh, not even up to two months now. And I was just away, just last night. I'm still thinking about my wife. I'm still crying about my wife. It's still painful. So to the Rabo family, it's going to be very, very painful but i've learned that in whatever state I'm, i am 
whether it's a willow day or it's a palm day, to constantly rejoice before the Lord our God. Amen. You know, somebody was asking me, well, are you angry at God? I said, no. Do you have questions you want to ask God? I said, I don't. I don't. He said, why not? I said, I'm just so filled with gratitude that he gave me the opportunity to spend 26 years with my wife. I said, I'm privileged to be able to do that. Even last night, I'm still getting up. I'm saying, God, thank you that I was able to do live with my wife. And, and Pastor George and today, Rabo family, I want to say to you guys, it's a willow season. But even in the willow season, there are things we can think about. That God, thank you that we got to share this moment with Pastor Ben. When I thought about Pastor Ben, when you called me, I said, God, thank you that I got to eat that breakfast in your house last year with him. Thank you, Lord, that days before the conference, we got to speak and laugh. When my wife passed away, that he called me and prayed with me and encouraged me. That, Lord, thank you that I got to spend time with him and to talk and to laugh and to have a good time for all the years. So I want to say to the Arabo family, uh, we can always find something about him. As the children were sharing stories about Pastor Ben, wow. Lord, thank you that you had your daddy to yourself for these many years. Yeah, we can praise God if we want to. Amen. Because when I think about it, my wife said to me, I wouldn't have lived this long were it not for God. There are people who didn't have, were married for 10 years or 5 years or 20 years. But I got to do life. And we got to do life with Pastor Ben for this many years, we have every reason to rejoice even though we are in a willow season. <laughs> Say amen tonight, church. Yeah. I want to share one more scripture with you. And that's the book of Revelation chapter 7 verse 9. I want to show you something here. Because we started in Leviticus about the willow and the palm branch. But we see something different in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. He said, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their war church. Wow. Where's the willow? Wow. We started in Leviticus with the, the willow and the palm. That's at the beginning. But now we go back to the book of Revelation. At the end of days. So those who are before the throne, they had just the palm in their hands. In other words, the willow days are completely over with. That's a big deal for the believer. Your greatest investment on earth, your net worth is not money, cars, houses, and so that's not your net worth. Your net worth, your, our net worth has to be measured on the scale of eternity. In other words, if I can put it on the scale of eternity, that is not a net worth. That it doesn't really mean anything. If I can take you with me. In you know, weeks after my wife died, I will walk by her, her vanity and see all the jewelries they are there. Useless. Precious she's bought, useless. Everything she had, she doesn't need it anymore. What's going to count right now is our relationship with Jesus Christ and the investment she made in the kingdom of God. Many of us are breaking our neck for things that have no eternal ramifications. The greatest thing that can happen, you know, I began to look at my life, that my net worth is not a car. I can't take it to heaven with me. It's not jewelry, it's not gold, it's not car. Now, those things are good. Use them, enjoy them. 
But if you think that your worth or your net worth is based on the bottom line in your bank account, then you are completely mistaken. My wife couldn't take anything. But there's something that's awaiting her. And that is every investment she made in the kingdom of God. Your greatest net worth is the cross. The cross has a, a vertical part and a horizontal aspect. It's my relationship with Jesus and my relationship with the people God has placed in my life. My church family. My biological family. My friends. The people God has placed in my life. This is the most important thing. The question is, if you're here tonight, where's your standing? Say, so I'm not worried about Pastor Ben. Because right now, Pastor Ben doesn't have any willow in his hands. All Pastor Ben's got right now is the palm, is the shout of rejoicing and victory and celebration. If you see Pastor Ben right now and ask him if he would trade places here, he will never want to come spend a second here on earth. And that's our comfort. That a day is coming. When Jesus will take away every willow moment, every weeping moment, every challenging moment, every difficult moment, Jesus takes it all away. And all we have are our palm days. At the end of the day, we win, church. Come on, I said we win, church. Being a Christ follower is not something to be ashamed of. It's not something to be embarrassed. Rather, it is a privilege for us to associate with the God of the universe and to have a relationship with him. Your greatest investment on earth is your relationship with Jesus Christ. What are you doing with that? Do we take time? We spend so much of our time, effort, money, resources on things that have no eternal benefits. If God were to take you all your net worth right now and put it on the scale of eternity, I wonder if it will measure. I wonder if it will carry any weight. I think... Pastor Ben has left us an example and a legacy from the stories we've heard from the children and the friends and the brothers and the sisters. This man lived with eternity in mind. This man devoted his life. Who could see that? You know, my younger sister lives in Abuja. And my younger sister said to me, he said, look, he said, Pastor Ben is one pastor that if he sees you anyway, he's not ashamed to identify with you. He treats you like a human being. Because we live in a society where people have situational honor. In other words, I'm going to honor you because I know I can gain something from you. But Pastor Ben was not like that. Regardless of who you are, he loved you, he honored you, and treated you like you are made in the very image of Jesus Christ. We can praise God for his life. Here is the question. You're here tonight. Are you born again? If you should die right now, where are you going to spend the rest of your life? I think this is a great opportunity for us to really think about our lives. If you are born again, think about your investment. Where are you putting the most of your investment in? Whether it's your finances, your time, your gifting, your life, does your investment really count? Or is it only when you are here on earth? If your investment only has value while you're here on earth, then in, you really have no investment. Jesus said, he said, labor not for the meat that perish, but for the meat that leads to everlasting life. Jesus would tell us all the time that where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Pastor Ben. You, you could tell where Pastor Ben's heart was because his money, his time, his everything, he invested it in the kingdom. But he's left us an example. 
And so I want to say to those of all who are born again, you've given your life to Jesus Christ. I applaud you and I celebrate you. But I think Pastor Ben is a reminder. And God wants to remind us that we should invest more in where it really counts. Our money, our time, our lives, and everything God has given to us. And secondly, I want to pray for you. If you're in this room tonight, maybe you're watching us on the streaming live. And you haven't asked Jesus to come and be the Lord of your life. What a great opportunity to now will be like. What a blessing it will be that regardless of what I go through here, my greatest joy is I'm going to see Pastor Ben again. My greatest joy is I'm going to see my wife again. That's my greatest joy. That I will see her again. And this time, we will both have palms in our hands. And we will celebrate Jesus Christ for the rest of our lives. Amen. Can we just stand to our feet? I want to pray for us tonight. I want to pray for us tonight. I want to pray for you. If you're here tonight, or maybe you're watching us on our streaming live, and you haven't asked Jesus to come and be the Lord of your life, I want to pray for you tonight. If you want to raise your hand up, I'm fine. But if you don't want to, it's okay. I understand. Raising your hand will just give us who you are so we can guide you and follow you up and give you materials that's going to help you grow in your faith and in your relationship with Jesus Christ. But if you're not comfortable in doing that, it's okay. Just pray with me as you make Jesus the Lord of your life. Will you pray with me if you are here right now? Just say with me, say, Dear Father, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus died for me. And on the third day, God raised him from the grave. Today, I ask you to forgive me all of my sins. Change my life. Give me a new beginning. Use me for your glory. In Jesus' name, say amen. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for men and women, young people that have made a commitment to serving you tonight. I pray that you will strengthen them. You said in John 1, 12, as many as receive him, to them you give the right, the power, the authority to become the sons and daughters of God. I pray for strength that they will live for you and serve you and that they will invest in what truly matters. We invest in eternity in the name of Jesus. I pray for the believers, those who are already born again, that that we will begin to invest in the place that really matters, that really, really counts beyond here. I pray, oh God, that we begin to seek things that are both, that we are not just so focused on just making a name for ourselves or acquiring stuff here, but that we invest much more in our relationship with you, in knowing Jesus, and in relationship with our brothers and sisters. We thank you tonight. We praise you. And we give you glory tonight. And it's in Jesus' name we've prayed. And every believer say amen. Can we just praise Jesus? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead and celebrate the Lord. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Wow, thank you so much, Pastor Benny. Awesome word. If you don't mind, as you remain standing, we'd like to pray for the family. I'd like to pray for the Rabo family in such a time as this. I'm sure you will agree they need all the comfort, all the consolation. If you don't mind, if you just step forward a little bit, all the Rabo family. I want us to really serenade them with God's grace and love and affection and strength and grace. Everything, everything we can. Church, I'd like you to stretch for your hands. I'd like you to make declarations, make announcements, pronouncements over them. I'd like you to pray for peace. I'd like you to pray for the courage of the Holy Ghost. I'd like you to pray for the comfort of the Holy Spirit. I'd like you to pray that beyond what our words can convey, the Holy Spirit will grant them peace. Peace in the innermost being. Strain for this season. In the name of Jesus. Since release your voice to heaven. 
prophesy, make declarations. Ask that the Lord will keep them strong. Ask that no enemy will be able to take advantage of this willow season. Pray for grace. Pray for the protection of the spirit. Remember the scripture declares that affliction shall not rise a second time. I'd like you to prophesy as they fly to and fro to Africa and beyond to participate in the funeral. Can you ask that the covering of the blood of the Lamb, ask for the angels of glory to surround them that as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord shall be round about them. Pray for the light of Jehovah to shine in every aspect of the Rabot dynasty in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody declare, prophesy. Rabosh kapatele nebosha. Beri nesifi kaposha. Ye kaparadi le pondele bada. Zeproni kususu pelibaya. Somebody cover them with the blood. Plead the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Let it be moments of salvation for anyone in the extended family that is yet to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. I like you to pray. I like you to pray. Let the heavens be open. Let grace be poured out. Let help be released. Let the consolation, the comfort of the Holy Spirit be upon in the name of Jesus, the entire Rabo family. Pray for Dolly Irabo. Pray for the three children. Pray for Pastor George. Pray for uh, Chris and, and, and Chooks and, and Brother Frank and everyone, their spouses and children. Pray for every extended Irabo family. We declare it is well with you that the hearing about you shall be for good. We forbid any further evil report. We declare that the counsel of the Lord alone over you shall prevail in the name of Jesus we enforce divine purpose we enforce divine counsel we declare that the will of the Lord shall prevail in the name of Jesus the Lord will order your steps the Lord will guide your going the Lord will guide your coming in the name of Jesus but day and by night the Lord shall cover you in under his wings you shall go under the covering of the Lord you shall go the sun shall not smite thee by day, neither the moon by night. In the name of Jesus, every creation of God shall agree with you. In the name of Jesus. And we declare as the church of Jesus, good shall come out of this. Testimonies shall come out of this. In the name of Jesus, we declare that the name of the Lord shall be glorified. Thank you for putting the enemy to shame. Thank you for glorifying Jesus. We pray for the kids we ask that they will grow up in the fullness of your purpose. You are the father of the fatherless. Show to them that you can do more, much more than their biological father could ever do. Thank you. Thank you for the answers that only you can give to the deepest questions, the deepest longings that only you can meet. We celebrate. We declare that every aspect of the remaining our processes, the funeral, and, and the service of song and everything back in Abuja and Lagos will go well. Your name alone will be glorified. Satan and all of his plans will be put to shame. Thank you, our King. To you alone belong the glory. We look forward to the palm seasons alone. Thank you, our Father. Come on, saints, go ahead and celebrate the Lord. Come on, celebrate the Lord. Please put your hands together and celebrate the King. Oh, put your hands together and celebrate the King. We give God all the glory. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. We thank God for that wonderful word. Pastor Benny, thank you for that word. Amen. Thank you because now we have a glimpse of light. Having palm even in the face of willow. Thank you so much. God bless you. Can we put our hands together and honor the grace upon the man of God. Amen. 
I want to thank you, Pastor Philip, for that dynamic prayer. Thank you so much. Can we put our hands together for Pastor Philip? Amen. Praise the Lord. We all gathered here tonight to pay our respect and to honor the memory of a wonderful man. But at this time, I want us to also extend that love and support by giving our offerings. You know, in any part of the world, funeral is very expensive. And the only way we can be part of the success of sending him home finally is what we're about to do tonight. So I want to encourage everyone, as God has laid it in your heart, to support, to offload the burden upon the Rabbos family. May God grant you the grace in Jesus' name. So if you're writing a check, make it payable to Fountain of Grace. We want it on one pause. Amen? If you need an envelope, we have the ushers that are walking through the aisles. Just raise your hand and they will give you an envelope. So if you're making a check, you're writing a check, make it payable to Fountain of Grace. And then um, we'll follow the directions of the ushers. Amen? Shall we bow our heads as we pray? Father, we thank you for such a time like this that we've come to honor the memory of your son. Father, we thank you for the privilege given unto us to show support financially even as the process of his funeral is ahead. Father, I thank you for every generous heart. Your word says that you honor those who propose in their hearts to give generously. Father, you said, O oh Lord God, that you shall make grace abound unto them. May your grace abound unto everyone tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, as they give, I ask and pray that you open the windows of heaven and you pour down blessings. You in turn, O oh Lord God, pour down blessings unto them. That as we offload financial burden upon this family, may you offload, O oh Lord God, financial burden over their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we're asking and praying that everything that is needed for the success of this burial, you shall make it abound unto this family. And we promise to give you all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. I pray. Amen. And, and those of us that are giving online also, please. I know you may not have, you know, we have online uh, FOG. Can you please display it? Or you can text to give. We're going to display it there. 781-209-667. Amen? 6667. And as you do that, God will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Heaven has gained the saints. Let's rise to our feet and celebrate. Hallelujah. Your hands.
family just just want to thank every one of you guys <laughs> when pastor ben passed something left me it was my best friend we weren't that far apart the distance of our age we did everything together everything wake up in the morning he's the first one i call I, I, I told Jesus this. I just want to thank you very much, Pastor Benny. Thank you, Pastor Peter. Thank you, Bishop. I, I told God he hurts. He hurts. He hurts. He hurts. Why, George, I'm faithful. So I just want to thank you guys. Thank, thank Pastor Philip. Thank you. Thank you guys for stopping by. You know, it's just, it, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And you know, I never would have thought that I would be burying Pastor Ben. I never would have thought that. It's my baby brother. It's my baby brother. Oh, just thank you guys. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Pastor Philip. Thank you, every one of you guys. Just continue to pray for us, please. Please. I've never felt the way I felt now. I'm so weak and vulnerable. Please pray for us. Please pray for us. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the Irabo family, I want to extend our deepest gratitude to each and every one of you. Your presence, your love, your support during this difficult um, time of remembrance for our family. We are profoundly grateful um, for your confident words, your heartfelt reflections and prayers. Um, the prayers and uh, reflections that provide us strength to us, to our family, um, to Uncle Ben's memory. A special thanks to everyone that has contributed to this service. Your thoughtful gesture have added a sense of reverence in this time of remembrance. To all who have um, offered kind words of condolences and act of kindness we are touched by your act your thoughtfulness your generosity like you all know it's a difficult time for our family it's a, it's a painful time because we all hurt everyone we love is hurting so it's, it's like it's multiplied in a way so um I thank, I thank every single one of you for being here. And as we gather to bid farewell to my dear uncle, Uncle Ben, we, remember, we are reminded of the preciousness of life and the importance of community and support. May the memories shared today and the love we hold in our hearts for Uncle Ben bring us peace and healing in the days ahead. 
again, uh, I want to say thank you on behalf of the Rapper family. Praise the Lord, somebody. Okay, I'm going to try that again. Because the Pastor Benny just preached and mentioned how in everything we should give thanks. Praise the Lord, everybody. You see, you don't know what your praise will do for the Irobo family. <laughs> you see, in the Bible says God inhabits praise. I'm here to close, but I feel a need for something. The Bible said that God inhabits praise. So if you will praise God with me on behalf of the Iwobo family, will it not bring the presence of God to them? Could you please just open your mouth and just for a minute or two, just begin to thank God in the midst of the pain, in the, in the midst of it all. Could somebody help the Iwobo family by just offering a, a, a thanks to God tonight? Could somebody just offer a praise to Almighty God on their behalf tonight? Could somebody just say, God, you are good and your mercy is forever? Could somebody on their behalf? You see, God inhabits praise. And sometimes they may not have the strength themselves to praise. But if you praise on their behalf. You know, Pastor Philip, sometimes we can't pray for ourselves because of what we are going through. That is why Pastor plead with us to pray for them. Because sometimes the strength to pray for yourself is not there. It's the same thing with praise. Could somebody... In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, offer a praise to God on behalf of my pastor and his family tonight. On behalf of the children of Pastor Ben, on behalf of his wife, on behalf of the siblings. Somebody help me tonight to offer to God the sacrifice of praise. Ah, you are worthy. You are worthy. Hario Shababa Koraba Sata Yerebekusa. Father, we thank you. Ah, God, you all don't know how you all don't know what you're doing right now. Yay. Father, we give you thanks. Father, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. Come inhabit God. Come inhabit their lives. Come be their strength. Daddy, come be their refuge. Daddy, come be their fortress. Because we praise you tonight. Come be the strength that they need. Come be the peace that they need. Father! Mm. As Ben was to his children, as Osama has testified of her father as they have testified of him. Father, you said you are even closer than a brother. We ask of you in the mighty name of Jesus that you will be close to them in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask that you will uphold them with your right hand of righteousness, that you will be the keeper of their souls, that you will be the strength that they need right now. Keep their hearts and their minds, God. Watch over them and guard them jealously. Father, you are our Father. Father, it means provider. It means support. Father means one that is there to uphold. You are our father. You are their father. Do what a father do to them. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. 
And Father, we pray for everyone that have come here tonight to, to weep with them that weep and to mourn with them that mourn. God, we pray that you will be their strength in the name of Jesus Christ, that you will be their peace, God, that, that when they, they come, because a day is going to come, that you will provide strength for them in the mighty name of Jesus. For all the pastors, the bishops that are here that have come, God, from near and far, Lord, we give you thanks for them coming to be strength to them in the mighty name of Jesus. For everyone that are here and those that are viewing by way of, of, of media, Father, we give you glory. We thank you for strengthening Pastor Dolly and for being the peace that she needs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Raise your right hand as I bless you. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. May we share the grace. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen surely god's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever our confession one time my mouth is full of praise my heart is full of joy and my hands are fruitful god bless you thank you those on the internet god bless you please the irobo family has provided something to take away so please go through the door on my left to the fellowship hall in the back and please receive what they have provided for you to take away god bless you <laughs>